So, now, no photos. At least it looks good, all, um, all these people. Huh? I'm looking in uh, quite some lights here, so oh, no. difficult for me to see. How do you put this on? I think it's is on already. Is it on? Yeah. Hello. Yes. Yeah. I think we need to let them. Yeah. And we'll look to see them. Uh, let them do the work. <laughs> Send them away. Yes. Yeah. Uh, flink with flashlights. Okay. Okay. So we take one minute more with the photos. Yes, let's take one more minute. Yeah. Final, final one, uh, France. Yeah. 
Zullen we die even weghalen, heren? Dat uh, ziet er bij even, ja. A bit better for, uh, for the photos, I assume. Eh? So, <laughs> no, no bottles on it and a smile. Yeah? Yeah, that's even better. Thank you for that. Thank you. It's pretty good water, by the way. Yeah. Very good water. Ah. Okay. Okay, then we start, and you're mostly welcome to this uh, press event, and the structure of the event today is that I start to talk a couple of minutes, <coughs> and then uh, Jan Homan uh, take a couple of minutes also, and then we hand over to the guys who's going to run the company, Dick Boer, and also Franz Müller. This is an historical day for, I think, for both companies, and uh, because those companies have a great and big legacy in history. They are also, you know, entrepreneur-like company from the beginning, family founded from the beginning and so on. So the roots are still in those companies and we shall, you know, save those roots in the future. I think it's in incredibly important for that in the future. Also the good values we have in the both companies. This uh, combination of two European company, based European company, is a great thing because we are going to be, when we talk about market value, number one in Europe and number three in, in, in the world after Walmart and, and Kruger. So that is fantastic, you say, in, in, but it's not the, the goal in itself to, to be the biggest in Europe and number three globally. But we are going to have a lot of muscles in the future to invest in the consumer, in the employees, in new technique, in innovation, etc., etc. So this deal, this combination, make really sense for all the stakeholders, for the shareholders, as I said, in employees, for the societies, etc., etc. The process has been uh, not long, but it takes its time, you know, to agree and, and convince each other in detail about this type of deal. And this deal is a merger of equal. And you can see it also in the press release, and John is going to talk more about this later on. When you look at the governance model, look at from the top and down, look at the supervisory board, 
the combination of the last and our whole look at the committees, the board committees, the same pattern, look at the management board, the six people who is entering the management board is the same pattern, etc. Et so we have been extremely consequent you know, when we talk about the, the governance uh, uh, structure. Uh, I have been working now as a chairman in the last for I think three years now. And uh, I have also a personal relation to this in industry because my father was a retailer. And I've said to my colleagues before, I'm the only one, literally, who is born in a store above the store. It was an ICA store, which our whole partly owned for, for a couple of years ago. So I'm really flattered to, to, to be here today and be working, as I said, in Delhaes. And once again, to repeat, you know, the legacy in Delhaes the roots of the Lhas family founded company, nearly 150 years old, as all those have a long history. And that is our duty from both sides now to, to take care of the good things in our different each uh, parties. The process, once again, uh, has been very efficient, very constructive. Uh, I would like to take, uh, thank you, Jan, for, for the team you have been running and being the, the, the head of. So it ended up in a very, very good combination. I think it's not one winner, it's, it's two winners, and then the rest is the winner outside the boardroom, as I said, the consumer, the shareholders, society, etc., etc. So, uh, Jan, now it's your turn to... Thank you, Mats. <clears throat> yeah, as you rightly said, uh, this is an, uh, a real momentous moment. Uh, for all of us. I, I'm excited uh, to be part of that. I'm excited to, uh, to be asked to serve uh, alongside you uh, in the presidium uh, that we will set up uh, to make sure that Dick and Franz do have an audience always where they can talk to on, on a regular basis, irregular basis. We are there for them. Uh, this is a uh, combined uh, organization uh, that is stronger, uh, will be more innovative, and will be also more competitive. And I think we will be able to serve more customers uh, than we ever could, and more customers in more locations, and with a more uh, complete uh, assortment of products. Um, I'm also convinced that the combination Ahol del Haze uh, will offer many opportunities for our employees, uh, rich opportunities for employment, but also for personal development, and, and, and further enhancement of their careers. Uh, let me say that it was a pleasure to work with you, Mats. Uh, we have our ups and downs in these discussions, but I think we always were able to find each other. Uh, your team, uh, well worked with your team, it was really a pleasure. And it has been clear from the very moment that we started this discussion that we had a joint view. We shared the passion for, being, for making this uh, making this work, and that we have an absolute commitment, not just to making this deal right, but also to make sure that the deal will work right in the future. Because at the end, that is the purpose, uh, to make sure that together we'll make it happen in the best interest of our customers, uh, of our associates, and of our shareholders. Um, let me now take a quick look at the chart that describes, yes, this one. Uh, you will see here the chart that is, explains the governance. Um, the company will be led by a two-tier board uh, comprising a supervisory board and a management board. Uh, the day-to-day -day management uh, will be overseen by an executive committee, and Ahold and Del Haze are equally represented in both the supervisory board, the management board, and in the uh, committee. Uh, Mats uh, Janssen uh, will be the chairman. He is currently the chairman of Del Haas, uh, supervisory board, but he will be the chairman of the supervisory board of the new combined organization. Uh, Jacques de Vaucalois and myself will be vice chairman. And as I said, Mats and I will form a presidium so that we are always available for the CEO, the deputy CEO, when they need any counseling or whether they need any discussion, we will be there for them. Uh, Dick Boer, uh, currently the CEO of Royal Aholt, uh, will be the CEO of the combined 
Company. En Frans Muller, currently the CEO of Dalhuizen Group, uh, will be deputy CEO and also chief integration officer. Uh, Mr. Jeff Carr, currently the CFO of Royal Aholt, will be the chief financial officer. And uh, Mr. Pierre Bochu, uh, will currently the CFO of Royal Dalhuizen, and he will be the um, chief operating officer in charge of Europe. And then the current uh, chief operating officers of Aholt and Dalhuizen in the United States uh, will stay on and be the chief operating officers for their respective businesses in the United States. Of course, all we present today is subject to shareholder approval. Uh, Aholt Dalhuizen will have its head office in the Netherlands and is a European headquarter based here in Brussels. And having said that, I think I'd like to introduce uh, Dick Boer, the CEO of Aholt, together with Frans Muller, the CEO of Dalhuizen, and they together will walk you through the presentation and then afterwards there is an opportunity to answer questions. So please, Dick and Frans. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mats and Jan. Um, it's, of course, a fantastic moment to be here today in Brussels. Uh, first of all, Mats and myself share at least one thing. We're both born in a store um, and, and coming from a grocery retail background um, and, and, and being in that environment, you know how important it is finally to serve the customers in the best way as we can and also do that in, in a way that is, it, it is part of our society and the heritage of the brands we have. So that's first of all, I'm, I'm born on the, on the border of the Netherlands and Belgium and Zeeuws Vlaanderen, so there is something Flemish in, as you can imagine, uh, but that's a nice occasion maybe for the fact that I'm sitting here now together with Frans. Frans and myself, we know each other uh, for a longer period of time, we have only a short period of time together in one of the companies we, uh, we both worked, um, in Metro Macro, the cash and carry company. But of course, during that period of time, we met each other in different occasions during the last 15 years, because, yeah, you work in, 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 in retail, so you always meet each other. And I think for, for that to say also, I think, as mentioned also by both Germans, this, of course, uh, the fact that we're sitting here is also because we strongly believe, and the moment we start discussing that, Franz and myself, that these companies have such great trusted brands, but also great heritage, but also need, let's say, even get stronger and even more, let's say, better as a company if we can bring them together and leave, really use that, that platform. So that's why I would like to start with. Um, and we also, we know we have retail portfolios around the globe with long trusted brands, uh, Mats mentioned already, 147 years old, the last brand, um, Albert Heijn, 127 years old. And also in the US, the brands are most, mostly already long heritage foundations of our companies. That's what we share and the values we have from the companies. We have businesses, six and a half thousand, I, I already said, is clearly, uh, as expressed also by, uh, by the chairman, as a merger of equals, where we belong to the top retailers in, 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 in the US, but certainly also here in the Benelux. Together, not only here, but also in Southern Europe, Southern Europe, Eastern Europe, and with joint ventures with Indonesia and, and Portugal. Totally, this company with, uh, in a new merger will, 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 will service 50 million customers on a weekly basis. We strongly believe that Aalt and Deleuze will deliver a better shopping experience uh, for our customers, and that's what it's all, all about. At the end of the day, uh, the combination will give us tremendous opportunities, uh, accelerate the innovation of what the customer is waiting for, not only in products, in the omnichannel shopping, everywhere, anytime, anyhow, you want to give your value and choice and service to the customers to shop. The transaction will also create significant value for our shareholders. We'll anticipate run rate synergies of 500 million per annum to be fully realized in the third year after completion. Both businesses are highly cash generative, and this will allow Al Delez to continue to invest in future growth, but at the same time to deliver attractive returns for our shareholders. So what I will give you now quickly is the transaction details of, uh, of, um, of the highlights of today's announcement of the merger. Um, it, it proposed, it's what, what you see here on the slide, it gives you a clear understanding of what the transaction means. We propose that, Ahold, that the last shareholders will receive 4.75 of Ahold shares for cash, for each, sorry, for each the last share, so that following the, mer the merger, Ahold, 
holders will own approximately 61% of the combined company's equity, and the last shareholders approximately 39%. So I hope that's clear. So uh, it's a share deal between the two companies with an exchange rate a ratio of 4.75. Um, Alt has terminate, uh, terminated today its current uh, share buyback program, but as part of this transaction, as part of this transaction, it plans also to make, prior uh, to the completion of the merger, a capital return of a billion euros uh, in, in the way of a reverse stock split, uh, which we have done also a couple of years ago. The transaction will be structured as a merger of Eclis, as, 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 as the chairman already said. With the combined entity will be named Ahold Deleuze. Ahold will be the ongoing listed entity and be listed in Amsterdam, as well, of course, the primary listing, but also additional listings in Brussels. We plan to have extraordinary shareholder meeting for each company to seek approval for the merger, either in the fourth quarter of 2015 or the first quarter of 2016. As a result, we expect to complete the merger the transaction by mid-2016 following the usual regulatory clearance and associates consultancy proceed consultation procedures as applicable. Turning again to the governance, um, as we already briefly mentioned, this merger creates a leading international food retailer. Um, so the, it cre really creates a, a new company in a way um, a leading international food retailer with highly competitive portfolios. It enhanced scale allows us to, uh, to innovate um, uh, and, and act as a market leader to improve the overall value proposition while, ma while maintaining our strong and local trusted brands, because that's what it's all about. And this company is not for one brand in the world. We have this heritage of all our facts and our brands already uh, established for so long. Both companies share similar values and strategies. That was a nice thing when Franz and myself were start talking about these companies. And then you start comparing your values, your strategies you have. We are supermarkets. We are aiming for the best supermarket with great value. So all these things are coming together. And we have a strong focus from both companies on, uh, on, on, on the customer. We believe and that we will be able to further enhance the customer experience, as I said, by improving the customer offer. An important factor supporting the potential success of the combined Owl de Las group is formed by the continued support and engagement of our associates. We believe that the creation of a bigger, stronger, and more capable company will result in an even better and place to work, and that's a guarantee on a long-term, sustainable future with more exciting career and development opportunities for our people. And finally, the combined group will start from a strong financial foundation, as I said. And the future growth of the group will be established by using that strong foundation and can deliver attractive returns to our shareholders. And as we mentioned at the beginning on this, on this I think we, we, we started with, with a fantastic opportunity um, um, where we clearly, and I think we are now almost there, I think I will hand it over to Frans, um, that we really will, uh, will continue to work together on this great journey as a company together. And I think we have built on that as a group, uh, individual, as two companies, but I'm looking forward also to work together very closely with Frans. Up to you, Frans. Thank you, Dick. Um, such a trajectory of um, looking forward for this joint opportunity, you always have also some chemistry in negotiations. There were two things uh, where Dick and myself were very much aligned from the very beginning. Those two companies have a very common strategic rationale to be together in business. And the second thing, what we discussed also, and we agreed, after f knowing each other for 15 years, but never worked to together, it would be good fun to work together and make this happen from both sides of the companies and do this jointly. And that's also what the chairman were very clear in. We're going to see this as a joint project with joint responsibility to make this happen. If we look at um, slide number 12, please. Then, slide number 12 here. Then you see um, uh, the total footprint of our companies. It's a true big company in food retail. And those of you who followed um, Deleuze and Aholt in the past know that we are strong in local brands in markets where we have high market shares and high relative market shares 
uh, on, uh, in Europe, but also on the other side of the ocean. And I think this is a strong position both companies have. And it's a rare combination, it's a rare strategic fit, those two companies. Strong brands in local markets, strong in food, strong in food supermarkets, very strong in fresh, very strong in private label, close to the communities, and in very complementary and high level of similarity of the values, how we would like to run a business. We have a very clear understanding of food retail in the supermarket arena. And as you know, um, the industry continues to change and evolve as customer preferences also change and evolve. With changing customer taste and the adoption of new technologies and the expectations around convenience. There's a lot of things going to change in food retail and changing now already. And this proposed combination of Ahol Deleuze will have a wide variety of store formats and ways to shop to meet the needs of virtually any customer profile. We intend to maintain this variety of banners uh, and formats, as this is the reason why we are so strongly anchored. We love our local supermarket brands. We love the geographies where we compete. And we believe that there are limited benefits to come from consolidating banner names or formats. While we are not breaking these out today, we seek significant opportunities to leverage the best practice in each company, to realize revenue synergies from bringing the groups together following the completion of the transaction. We look forward on sharing the future success stories after completion, and this will be a key focus for us, and also a key focus for us myself in my role as overseeing the integration process. This slides provide you with two examples on this front. Ahold has clearly a more established track record in digital and online platforms, offering customers a rich online experience. And we believe there is a tremendous revenue opportunity for us by leveraging this across the Deleuze network. Perhaps not in every geography and not in every format, but we feel we can definitely accelerate growth here in the online, in the online part of our business. Secondly, both groups have expertise in fresh and in private label. And the less fresh capabilities, for example, in Belgium, but also at Hannaford Brothers in the northern part of the US, could be leveraged in adjacencies, banners, and the private label programs of Ahold and Deleuze provide opportunities to learn from each other. Close to the customer, close to the customer proposition, make customers surprise, innovate, and give them a better product than the competition can do. For the, association, for the associates of the both companies, we expect that Ahol Deleuze will be an even more attractive supplier, uh, a more attractive employer. Firstly, we should be in a position to use the best management practices and business processes. And if we are able to extract those, the group will be a more attractive and efficient place to work. Secondly, we will be able to offer our talent more ways to develop, which should also help us in competing and winning and competing for the best talent in the market. Retaining existing experienced associates along with adding fresh perspectives will ultimately also stimulate the overall performance culture of our company. And thirdly, the combination will offer more diverse growth and development opportunities. The difference in formats, organizations, and the attractive geographies where we op operate should help in supporting rich careers within the group. As Dick mentioned before, Ahold and Deleuze are dedicated to the communities they serve. We are a local player, close to the customer, close to the communities in all the geographies where we operate. And on this slide you can see the corporate responsibility programs of both groups. Ahold's responsible retailing program and Deleuze 2020 ambition on its way to super good. These programs are high on our agenda at both companies. And Jan Homan already shared with you the Committee on Sustainability and Innovation, which is exactly one of the things we would like to highlight and give attention to. We believe, therefore, that we can learn from each other in order to accelerate the progress and impact we have been making on this front in building a stronger contribution to our communities we work in. On this slide, we summarize why this merger should deliver on page slide 16. Um, why this uh, mismerger should deliver long-term value for investors, realizing significant synergies, investing in long-term growth, 
and providing attractive returns to shareholders. And you see here also on this chart what we have seen in the press release, the 500 million synergies per annum to be arriving bottom line. The 350 million of one-off cost uh, we're going to take. And also, on top of this, we said that serving our present business with the present programs we run, if it's Thunder for Ahold in the US, if it's our easy, fresh, and affordable programs, we keep on saving also now to invest in our company and to invest in price. The 500 million bottom line is on top per annum as from the third year. Um, Dick already mentioned that Ahold um, will return uh, to their shareholders the 1 billion pre-transaction, the 1 billion euros. Uh, what the market has not completely understood yet is that also Deleuze will just continue to pay dividend in 2015. So far, that has not been clearly understood. On page 17, um, you see the two companies together. And what do we like to focus on? We talked a lot with our management board members, the six uh, which were presented today. And um, we have a very focused management team. And you see, I've seen a lot of retail experience from both companies. A focused management team to lead the combination. We all have a sense of urgency to get the full benefits available from the proposed combination. Secondly, we believe the proposed combination will be stronger. Ajo de Les will have, great, uh, will have a great financial profile with a very strong balance sheet and the capability to continue generating significant free cash flow. This positions as well to fund further investments in the offer, in the store networks, in order, in the end, to drive revenue and profit growth. This should enable us to provide a superior customer offering to make us even more attractive as an employer, to continue servicing our communities, and to be a compelling proposition for our shareholders. We are confident in our ability to achieve these objectives and of the future success of the combined group called Ahold Deleuze. We believe we will be well positioned to not only maintain, but also grow our leading position across our markets. And here, I would like to turn the floor to you for your questions you might have. Well, I have one question about uh, the merger, because uh, how are you going to manage uh, the emotions in, in Belgium? Uh, as I read in the news blog, the Dutchman will be the boss uh, over Del Haas. Maybe you can uh, react on uh, the emotions and how you will manage these emotions. Yeah, from, from a humor perspective, uh, there is already a Dutchman uh, heading up the list at the moment. Uh, so and a Swede the, is the chairman. So the, the, so the newspaper has not been very well informed that this is not, this is not a new phenomenon, no. but more on, an, on, a, on, a, on a serious note. Like, this, like Dick already mentioned, Ahold has been already very proud about their local brands, their local store brands, supermarket brands. The same for the less. And for the group, guess what? We think that those local supermarket brands are one of our strengths of the combination. So for the less in Belgium, if you would like to uh, talk to about that topic, also the less in Belgium will be a very strong brand going forward and that we even strengthen that brand further. Um, we also informed the unions this morning uh, that of course we keep to our commitment of our transformation plan, including the investments. Um, we also said to the unions that, of course, we uh, will further work on the Deleuze brand in Belgium. Um, and that's, I think, uh, if it's a Dutchman um, or if it's uh, another Dutchman or if it's a Swede as, a, as our chairman or a Dutchman as our vice chairman, we believe in Deleuze in Belgium. If I can add to that uh, important question, because it's a lot of emotions, you know, in this type of or combination from, from uh, the different countries also, not only uh, in, in Belgium. And that's why the governance model also is so important, because you start with, if it's emerging equal as it is, then you have the 50-50 split, as Jan said, and show on, on the slide. And uh, also we have to understand and, and remind ourselves about the history in, in those countries, because uh, companies, because in the beginning, 
it was more or less you know domestic operation and uh, that when you cross border and became an international player a global player then it's going to be reflected also in in the composition of the board and and, and also the executive committees so th that is one of the explanation why you have so many mixed you know people with different passports in 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 the board or or executive committee and maybe also to uh, to add on that two thirds of our future business of more than 50 billion, as you know, is in the US. <clears throat> so that's an important part of this new company. Um, and as uh, Franz said, the local brands are the ones who are representing to the customer every day in every day's life. And that's the heritage we will never, never take away because that's where it really comes to the customer and to the society. Um, we also will leave the Brussels office as a European headquarters for the new combination. The name is a combination of both, and I think it is uh, uh, praying also clear a representation of all the things we do on a global on, on a global level. And I think that's also what you will see back in leadership and in uh, in running this uh, the company going forward. Take a microphone, please. You know, can you hand over the microphone so we can hear you, all of us? Uh, this is not the first time these two companies have uh, studied a combination of their activities. Um, it hasn't worked in the past. Why has it worked now? Jan, should you start? Yeah, I think it. Uh, uh, in my opinion, it has worked because we uh, we started off on on the right premise. Uh, being a merger of equals um, and we have uh, gradually we have taken the time to get to know each other uh, to get to trust each other uh, to get to better understand the motives that we both had and the strategies behind that and once you have the logic or the strategic logic uh, and the compelling logic that these two great companies together can be even more stronger and, and have a more compelling proposition to customers and employees and shareholders, uh, and the chemistry is right, then it, it almost goes from itself. Yeah? And in fact, that's what we have felt in the last couple of weeks, that uh, it was relatively easy to come together in finding, uh, based on the, you know, the foundation that we had, uh, finding the right type of structure, governance structure important, but also all the other things that come into play. And yeah, there is also great trust, and I think that's important. Trust really is the basis for a successful uh, future. If I add to, to that, John, uh, the business model is a condition, you know, that we are competitive, and, and uh, all that uh, type of, of argument that it makes sense in different dimensions. But in, in, in deals overall, that's my experience, I think yours also and others, that the irrational factor is very important, that it click, you know, between the team that we are constructive and so on. We had our ups and downs, more ups and downs, I must say. And, and uh, uh, the first time I met, met Jan, I think it was very, very good, a very good meeting and so on. And I think we had trust from our level for each other in this process. So that is also very important, the irrational factor, okay? Yeah, here on the first or the second round, yeah. And so I was wondering, maybe I missed, but there's going to be a European headquarters in Brussels. Where's, where's the global headquarters going to be? And uh, where will the shareholders meetings every year take place? In, in the Netherlands, in Belgium, where will the quarterly results be presented? <laughs> uh, can any one of you clarify that? Yeah, the global headquarters will be uh, in the Netherlands, and, and of course there will be the head seat of the, of the combination. So, yeah, quarterly results will be presented in the Netherlands, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, maybe maybe you also went already when you were following the last to uh, to to Brussels, so and and vice versa for your colleagues out of uh, out of Belgium. But yeah, it might be some travelling for for others yeah, to come to uh, to uh, to the Netherlands. Maybe it's, it's not so far away, by the way. No, it's not. <laughs> um, and maybe uh, could any one of you, uh, Mr. Uh, maybe Mr. Franz Müller, explain a little bit about the um, uh, the reasons that um, that made this the right time for the merger because. We understood, but maybe we're not informed correctly, that it also has a lot to do with the competition by discounters. And I mean, you mentioned something about 
changes in industry. Um, I'm not sure if this is one of the changes you're hinting at. And of course, another change is um, uh, the development of online uh, uh, marketing and sales. Yeah. So maybe you can elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, let's, let's answer that question. I think uh, Frans and myself will, will, will take part of it. So first of all, I think, why is it a good momentum? I think both strategies are compelling, but also similar. And we face similar, uh, I would say, also uh, nicer challenges. But we also are in a similar process of repositioning and pu putting our companies in a better position to our customers. And so we in the US uh, launched our program, Thunder. Al, uh, from from Al to Zay, the Lazar did quite some things towards improving the customer proposition. So in a way, when I with Franz were talking about the strategy, there was not a lot between it. 90% we all agree. So look, we want to become even a stronger local supermarket, is using the scale and the size of our business even in a better way to compete to others. And the others are multiple, of course. And the market is very diverse. It's not only discount, it's high-end retailers, it's online retailers. And I think with the combination with the investments we can do now together in innovation, in online, in offering new formats to our customers, we really have an opportunity to, uh, to use the scale of our company and I think also the talents we have. So Franz, maybe you elaborate also on that. Yeah, this is, this is an, uh, an item of uh, joint forces, but it's also an item of market developments. Uh, and we have uh, more than 60% of our business in the US. That market is consolidating very fast, uh, a faster consolidation in the last two years than in the previous 20. Um, so you have to strategically also think, what are you going to do? Uh, and uh, in food retail, Local footprints are important, but also scale matters uh, and relative market shares. And um, if you then look at the strategic options, um, and you can find a partner in creating that, or that, that scale and that combination, and you can find a partner who's also uh, in food retail, who's also in the US, has comparable uh, values and, and backgrounds and history, um, then that this is also, let's say, emotionally a very good fit. Um, same counts for Europe. Uh, I think also on the European front, uh, we have two companies now with uh, very good representations in the Benelux, but also in Central and, and, and Southeastern Europe with winning and leading market positions. And also Europe is for us a very interesting turf to do more things together going forward. So timing, the, the why now, um, uh, Dick mentioned, I think, uh, very precisely, um, and the strategic rationale, uh, why together, I just uh, try to explain to you. I hold recently expanded into uh, Belgium in the last row um, with Albert Heijn. What will happen with Albert Heijn shops close to the Leise shops? And uh, second question, you uh, provisioned 350 million uh, restructuring costs um, in order to reap uh, the benefits, the synergy benefits. What is included in these 350 million is that uh, people who have to go. Can you explain a more, bit more about that? Yeah, okay, thank you for the uh, first question. I think uh, Frans will take the, the second part also. Uh, first of all, as you know, we, we have been uh, with the Albert Heijn brand in, in the Belgian market with uh, currently 31 stores. It's too early in the process to, uh, to have any, uh, any views on that. Um, and certainly also in the case of uh, the regulatory authorities, we will see what, uh, well, how they review. And it's not the only place, and I would like to make it also clear, it focused a lot, of course, on the Benelux. But with Hannaford, uh, we are in the same, the uh, Lazarus Hannaford and we will stop a shop in the same area. So there will be some discussions going on in the next year, and that's why certainly also the, uh, the closing time will take some time to nine to 12 months, uh, because there will be reviews from trust authorities about how to work further with uh, some of the overlaps we have. Um, so I can imagine you focus a lot on, the, on, on just this area, but also we have in other areas some, some similar things. And that takes time in the integration phase. On the synergies and also therefore on the one-off cost of the 350 million you mentioned, both companies to assess if this combination is attractive, of course studied the synergies in general. And uh, we hired individually uh, good external advisors to look at to how to assess and how to uh, estimate the size of the synergies. Uh, this was a very detailed process, a very long process, um, because those synergies are very important, but also that they really come on the table. Both uh, companies came uh, roughly and very close to the same conclusion um, of the 500 million. 
Um, the 350 million one-off is an, an estimate um, of the one-off cost and is a basket of a number of things. So you can imagine, for example, uh, I can give you some examples. Um, if you would like to harmonize uh, the, the back office and you would like to harmonize IT and applications, then you have to choose uh, maybe to harmonize a number of things and or invest in IT. That's one item which is in its uh, all OPEX, by the way, the 350 is uh, operating expense. The second thing is um, if you uh, would like to look for a more efficient supply chain network and you would like to combine um, uh, warehouses in the US, for example, then you'll have uh, maybe a running uh, rental contract which you have to terminate. Uh, the third thing is you need consultancy costs to make sure that the integration process is going well, um, as you have to be very well prepared uh, uh, at date of closing. And the fourth thing, there are efficiency measures uh, where you have um, severance uh, costs also uh, to pay. So the 350 is an, a basket of a number of those items. As I said, one-off and operating expense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In a, yeah. You, you saw the power is when you have the microphone in your hand. Do you have yeah. a microphone? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, uh, that's uh, the basic requirement. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you op for obvious regulatory reasons, you were quite cautious in communication over the past couple of weeks. Uh, but could you, now that it's all done and dusted, give us a bit of a timeline of uh, when you kind of reached a point of no return? Uh, I see, for example, that that website you put up uh, this morning was registered two weeks ago. Was that kind of when you knew you were going ahead with this? John, take I, that. I, I have never felt that we uh, could identify points of no return, okay? I think we, <laughs> in a process like this, yeah, you continue to work and you progress, mm -hmm. and at some point it starts feeling better and better and better, and I cannot identify, you know, was yesterday better? Sometimes the day after is a little bit worse <laughs> than the day before, but it's, it's a process that continues, and I, I think we, uh, from the very beginning, we found a compelling strategic arguments so overwhelming that we felt we had to make it work and we have tried everything to make it work with the responsibilities on both sides that we have. But in particular, I think we, uh, the deal is, is important, but looking to the future and organizing for the future is even more important. Mm -hmm. So we have really tried to make sure that organize for success going forward is the most important thing. And I think that that has been the yeah, in the last couple of weeks, in particular, the uh, uh, the work that we have done. One one of the the condition, I must say, and, and one of the items we started to talk about, John and I, in a one-on-one -on -one meeting, was to to have those uh, six people on board, Dick and Franz, and and also Pierre Bouchy and Jeff, and also the two guys in in the U.S. That was extremely important to 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 secure that. Any more questions? Uh, second row, you have a mic? Because that's a power in this room. <coughs> <laughs> you should know this, Pascal. You should know this. <coughs> um, well, Mr. Miller, indeed, I have a question for you. Um, as integration man, that seems to be an excellent post to get the company terrifically well. Uh, is there a timetable uh, for you to replace your friend uh, Dick Boer? And secondly, uh, Mr. Jensen, is there a timetable for you to be replaced uh, by another chairman? and from which blood group he might come. So you start to ask me now today if I should resign. <laughs> it's quite early, quite early. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now we have started with this setup. You never know what's happening in the future. So, so this is a good team. I think we should not you know, judge ourselves. But if we look at the, the board uh, members and so on, the quality of the board members, uh, the quality also track record of the of the, the Dick friends and the other guys is very good. It's a very good team. And that's why I say once again, you know, the business model had to be sustainable and competitive. The banners has to be sustainable and competitive, but you had to have the right guys and girls who run the company. So I, I feel also that we have a very good setup and so on. So you can smile. Uh, I smile every day. Um, um, it's, it's it's one great 
Great. A, a fantastic um, opportunity, of course, for both of us uh, to go forward. And I think it's a, it's a great opportunity to, uh, for Franz and myself, and I'm speaking for myself in this case, to, uh, to get this company together, working hard on that, building a team, creating a fantastic organization. I think that's what is for first and foremost now for us. So, okay, it's, I got it, an so instruction we, before you, you ask one or two last questions, yeah. three. But just okay. uh, add on a uh, question. Um, <laughs> So there's no timetable or no principles building? What no. do you mean? Well, concerning? No. No. No? No. no. We, start, we start with first announcing the merger, completing the merger, and working together. I think that's already a journey on its own. Sorry. So, so then <laughs> you have you. to add also, you have to have, uh, you know, it's responsibility from the AGM, you know, to, to elect board members. And then the board in itself elect, for example, you know, chairman and vice chairman and so on. So every year you, you are going to be tested, you know, if you have confidence or not. That's we life. We have, we have mid, mid of June, um, mid, mid of 2016, we have hopefully our closing date. That's an estimate. Okay, next. Uh, and the second thing is then it starts uh, with integration work, which will not be done, Pascal, in two weeks' time. So we have plenty of work ahead of yeah. us. I've got a short question about a board. Uh, why are, are there two captains on board, and or two admirals in the U.S.? And I, I've got a, an, another question. That this, this is about the coming year. I've seen a, uh, a merger presentation of uh, Reed Elsevier and Walter Skluur in 1998, and this didn't become uh, a merger a after all. What is the biggest risk in the coming year when you have to wait for the authorities, and et, et cetera? Yeah, maybe maybe Jan, you can uh, you can take the uh, the Reed Elsevier. Maybe you were part of that. I don't know. But on the two two uh, two, two two admirals, I think it's very clear. We and and and, and Franz will fill in. We have two large operations in the U.S. at this moment, running on a repositioning, on a focused area of focusing them on delivering uh, their uh, their customer promise at this moment. It's big companies. Um, and, and, and it's far too early to say something about the two admirals. They are great leaders. We have together with them. We'll continue to work with them in the future. And with the integration, of course, Franz will do, uh, we can do plenty of work uh, uh, without even touching one of the two banners uh, in, in their heart. And they need to work in their heart at this moment to deliver the value to the customers. And it's big companies, so Franz, yeah, fill in. And a part of, uh, <coughs> of that answer is also connected to your second question. Um, what, are the, what are the risks uh, up to closing? Um, we, have every, uh, we have every week 50 million customers coming to us. And um, if we do not deliver their a proper performance, then our business uh, plan and our budgets uh, are in danger. So the biggest uh, task we have now that whilst we are in a closing process uh, to close the transaction, that we keep our present business up and running as our customers expect from us. So the, le the, the potential distraction uh, to our um, 375,000 people that might be a risk is also up, f up to us to manage this in a proper way. Okay, the last question now. Yes, um, my question is uh, who uh, took the initiative to start the talks this time? In some uh, early uh, reconstructions and newspapers, I read that it was actually the smaller party of the merger of equals. Is that true? Why is that so important for, for a journalist? <laughs> it's always nice to know who's taking yeah. the initiative. No? Doesn't, it doesn't matter, you know, we had, you know, we know each other, the industry people, the CEOs know each other, meet each other. Everybody has talked about this fit, it's the absolute the best in the world and so on, it makes sense, etc., etc. So, so I don't give you any detail about that. Okay, shall we finish the press conference? I think uh, there are possibilities to, to ask, have one-on-one -on -one also with those guys. Okay, thank you very much. No. Ik denk dat ik een beetje vast zit hier, uh, Frans. Ik zit een beetje hier geland.